Hi, I'm Stephen Feuerstein, and I write practically perfect PLSQL. Greetings and welcome to the PLSQL channel, a series of video trainings on the Oracle PLSQL language. My name is Stephen Feuerstein, and I'm a PLSQL developer just like you. This lesson is part of my series on I.O. input-output in Oracle PLSQL, and the focus of this lesson is sending output to the screen with DBMS output. So, writing data to system output. One of the oldest and most widely used built-in packages is DBMS output, and it allows you to display information on your screen, obviously a really useful feature to have in any programming language. As I say, it's the best known, most widely used, and probably the most abused. It's often used as a cheap and, well, seemingly easy debugging or tracing mechanism, and I suggest that that is a bad idea because of limitations in the package, and I'll come back to that at the end of this lesson. The good news is that there have been a number of ridiculous limitations with DBMS output in the past. First of all, there was a limitation to the size of the buffer, how much data you could write with DBMS output. So for those of us using DBMS output as a reporting mechanism, we would often hit that limit. Second of all, before 10.2, Oracle 10G release 2, you could only display strings of up to 255 characters, which was just silly. Now you can display strings of up to 32K. 32767, and you can specify that the buffer size should be unlimited. What are the problems with DBMS output output line? Well, first of all, you don't see any of the output until the outermost PLSQL block completes. In other words, if your program runs for an hour and you are issuing calls to DBMS output output line, you will see nothing until the hour is up. You cannot use the built-in to display the values of all PLSQL types, which is really quite frustrating. Generally speaking, you can only call DBMS output output line and pass a value to it if that value can be implicitly converted to a var car2. So strings, dates, numbers, but no booleans. And you can't display any high-level types. For example, I'd like to display the value of an XML document, the contents of a file, a clob, etc not supported with dbms output output line. So very unfortunate, but there are ways to work around all of those things and I'll come back to them at the end of my lesson. Finally, from the standpoint of using dbms output output line as a trace mechanism, there's only a single on off switch. You can enable it or disable it. And that's often not enough sophistication and subtlety for the kind of tracing we want to do. All right, so let's take a look at the features of dbms output. Then I'll talk about alternatives or enhancements or encapsulations around DBMS output so you can get better value out of this built-in. So enable and disable output. Calls to DBMS output output line and any others in that package will do nothing unless output is enabled. Generally speaking, the enabling and disabling of output is performed in the host environments. For example, if I'm running Toad, I have a separate DBMS output window I can enable or disable and in fact, in Toad these days, even if it's disabled, you, you see the output. But theoretically, you can turn it on, you can turn it off, set the buffer size, etc., all within your host environment. In SQL Plus, you would use the command set server output on to enable your output. But you can also enable output and disable with calls in the DBMS output program itself, the package, enable and disable. But if you call enable inside your program, that's not enough. The host environment also has to be ready to retrieve the contents of the buffer that's populated by DBMS output. These are details that you will by and large never deal with on a day-to-day -day basis because your host environment is just taking care of all of this for you. So what do you use DBMS output for? To put information onto your screen. The way it works is that the information is placed into a buffer, an area of memory, which is then retrieved with a call to DBMS output, get lines. Again, all of that is hidden from your view. You call a DBMS output dot put line to put out a line of text and an end of line marker. You can call put to put text into the buffer without an end of line marker. And you can call new line to add an end of line marker. So you've got a little bit of flexibility. Generally speaking, everybody just uses put line, 
but you can use those others as well let's take a look so here's a program that declares let's see I don't even need that anymore let's get let's simplify things down a bit I'm going to create a pro procedure called show lines and show lines takes the line takes a boolean flag do I want to add the new line or not then I'm going to call one of my DBMS output utilities called display header to display a header string and I'll show you what that does when you see the output and then we'll take a look at the code a bit later as one of my enhancements so display the header then display these three lines with put line that's this string plus a new line marker call put instead of put line and only add the new line if I specify that I want to same thing for ABC5 and then at the end I'm going to display a line of asterisks inside my my main body of code I'm going to display a line show ABC before disable I'm going to then disable output I'll turn output I'll enable output back on specify a buffer size of a million bytes and then I'm going to show the lines without a new line and with a new line let's take a look at what happens so first of all notice this is the display header program it automatically puts my string inside these this uh, the boundary the border of equal signs but notice that this statement never appears this text is gone because when I disable it automatically flushes the buffer so anything that was in the buffer was gone and then with a with a call to enable I start building up the buffer again so that's the impact of doing a disable again it's very unlikely you'll ever be doing that in your own code but it is possible to do let's move on to look at the rest of the output from show lines so without new line after puts I display ABC 1 2 3 which you can see right here all put lines so they have a new line marker and then I call ABC 4 or I display ABC 4 display ABC 5 but I didn't specify a new line so this code doesn't run and notice ABC 4 ABC 5 and all the asterisks are all on the same line so that's the impact of calling put without a put or a new line between it then I say well now use with new line after puts and now you can see that everything is on its own line so a put and a new line are equivalent to put line which is pretty much what all of us use but you have a little bit more flexibility available to you now there is also a program called get line and get lines <clears throat> that retrieve one or more rows from the buffer again it's unlikely you'll ever run into a need to call this procedure and in fact I sometimes have trouble getting it to work here's an example of it So I declare a list and array structure based on a predefined collection type in DBMS output. I put some information into my array. Then I call get lines to retrieve the information from the buffer. Let's just do one more call after this. Let's make sure that I've got a, a new line at the end. Then I'm going to get the lines, populate my array, and the number of elements. For each element in my array, I'm going to, do, to write to my log table this line of text. So I run this code. I look at the contents of my output log. And I don't see anything. So I'm not sure why this is not working. Clearly, Toad is able to call get lines and retrieve the buffer. There's some kind of interaction inside my PL SQL block. Maybe it's because I don't it's in the same block, it's not accessible. Let's do one more little test. But I don't see how this is going to work either. Put it in a separate block of code to retrieve the buffer. And try that now if I look at my table still no data okay so get lines is there obviously it runs I didn't get an error but it doesn't seem to be doing too much for me and anyway you're probably never gonna need to use it so let's talk about some recommendations for DBMS output my feeling is that in general you should never have a call to DBMS output that put line in your production code it's simply not flexible enough 
and it basically turns into a lot of extra junk code in your application. It's a very poor tracing mechanism, very poor debugging mechanism, and it's something that, generally speaking, people will put into their code and then take out because they're kind of embarrassed to even have it there. Bad idea all around. My suggestion is generally to encapsulate it, hide it behind some other program to make it more useful and less problematic. Because when it comes down to it, you still can't display Booleans, files, XML documents, etc. It's just not very handy all by itself. The demo zip that you can download contains lots of alternatives. Let's take a look. Let's take a look at how you can display Booleans with my BPL program, Boolean put line, various display procedures, the P package, which is my alternative to dbmsapa.putline generally. Why type all of that dbmsapa.putline when you can just type p.l and say putline? The watch package is a more flexible tracing mechanism. You can trace to the screen, but you might say, I don't want to see it on the screen. I want to see it in a table or a file or a database pipe so I can see all the output immediately, even if my program is still running. And then there's the Quest Error Manager at PLSQL Obsession, which, is a, which offers a much more sophisticated tracing and error management utility. These are all the files that are available in the demo zip. Let's take a look. So here's my BPL procedure, which basically says, well, pass in a Boolean and display a string. And all it does is convert that Boolean into a string. So when it's true, then true. When it's false, then false, else null. Notice I used a case expression rather than using an if else. Not necessary, the old fashioned way. And also here's a BPL string. So I can pass in the string and a value. And it will just automatically dis display the string and the Boolean value. So, for example, BPL, true, BPL string, is this true? Run my code, and there's my output. So this is a very simple encapsulator on top of dbmsapa.putline simply to let me display Boolean values. Let's take a look at the display header program, which I've used previously. I found that I often wanted to display a header when I was building some simple reports, and I would often want to put it inside a border and do a variety of other things. So I wrote a single program to do that for me. So it just uses dbms output but I can specify the length of my border, what the border character should be, do I want to center the string inside the border, do I want to indent it. So it's just a little simple helper utility. Here are some examples of using it. Different kinds of border characters, left justified or centered, indented. So there it is for you to use if you'd like. Display a club, display a file. These are two very common types of data that dbmsoutput.putline does not support. So I wrote my own little utility. Here's an example of using dbmslob to take in the club, read the next amount into my buffer, and display my buffer. And right now I've got the buffer limited to 255. You can make that an option in your program. You can add a parameter. Now I offer a much smarter club display mechanism display club smart which actually looks for delimiters inside the string and then doesn't break up strings arbitrarily on a 255 position so if you've got carriage returns it will respect your carriage returns and so on so you might want to play around and use that one instead and then display file pass in the, the name of the, the location the name of the file read the file with util file display each line very simple mechanism something that Oracle should provide for us. In fact, util file should, should have a show file mechanism built into it. Then there's the P package, one of my f favorite all-time packages. So the P package is my replacement for DBMS output output line generally. And the idea initially was I really don't want to have to write 20 characters, DBMS output output line, to simply display a string or a number or a date. But then I decided to also enhance it so what you see here on the left hand side is pretty much what Oracle should have done. They just provide one program, dbmsoutput.putline. If your value does not implicitly convert to a string, you can't use dbmsoutput.putline. So what I've done is create lots of overloadings of the L procedure. So display a string, 
display a string and a number. Display a string and a date and provide the format mask. Display a boolean. Display a file. All different overloadings of the L procedure for different combinations of data. Display a boolean and a number. A number and a date. So with the P package in place, I can then simply say p.l display my string, my boolean, whoops, and I also have to specify whether or not I want to show it. So let's add that. I can say display a string and a date. Sorry, there's my output. I can say display a string and a date. And it just knows what to do. Instead of me having to write concatenations and conversions, it just takes care of it for me. So the P package, I think, I think is a very nice all-round replacement for DBMS output output line. And the watch package is an example of how you can build a sophisticated tracing mechanism. So one of the problems with the DBMS output output line package in general is it only displays information to the screen. When I'm doing application tracing, when I'm running a program for a really long time, I might want to write information out to a table or a file or maybe even a database pipe so that another session can watch what's going on as my program is running. So with the watch package, you don't say DBMS output line, you say watch dot action, watch the action. And inside my package body, I have a single action program somewhere along here, here we go, that says, well, what's my target? If it's a table, insert into my execution trace table. Otherwise, construct a string, and if it's the target is the screen, use dbms output line. If the target is a file, use util file line. If the target is a pipe, then use dbms pipe. So all this logic is hidden away inside my single package. I just say watch.action, and it does the right thing for me. All of these approaches will give you much more flexibility, much more capability, and much higher ease of use than DBMS output output line. So again, my recommendation is never call DBMS output output line in your application code. It's very useful. Obviously, it's the only way we can get information out to the screen, but it leads to problems around limitations of functionality and the fact that we just get kind of lazy and say, ah, just call DBMS output output line, and we regret it later. So use it, but hide calls to that program behind other enhanced programs.